take the trade. All right, we'll let Coach Silverfield give an opening statement and please raise your hand for questions. And if you're in the back, please speak up so we can hear you over that. All right, first and foremost, uh, we'll make sure we recognize what a great deal it was for our city and our university to be able to recognize Glenn Rogers Sr. by naming a street after him. Obviously, uh, what a tremendous man. Um, his family I have a great relationship with from his, uh, some of his, his, his sons and his granddaughter who actually works in our football program. So it's an honor to just be any type of relationship with a wonderful family like that and obviously a trailblazer like that. So what a what a unique thing for us to start off this homecoming weekend. Um, obviously, having a legend like Kippy Brown come and talk to our team was phenomenal. Uh, as we know, the first black quarterback in program history, and a guy that I've known throughout my coaching career, who I've admired not only as a coach, but as a, a person and everything he meant to this program. Um, so those things are just, that's why I love being the football coach here, because of the history and the wonderful people that we've had to come through here. Um, Found a way to win a football game. When it's all said and done, all right, lots and lots and lots to be corrected. We could spend through the night here talking about things we got to get fixed and to improve upon. When it's all said and done, found a way to win. Going one and zero, and when it's all when it, that's all that matters. In college, it's really really hard to win football games. Our, our guys, I'm proud of their perseverance. I'm proud of their belief. Um, and you know what? Like I do every after every game, I ask them who's got room to, for improvement. It starts with me and everybody in the, the locker room raise their hands. And so um, that's what you want, young men. And I'm excited to uh, enjoy this one. Take a deep breath. I don't think my heart has slowed down yet. My wet, the legs are still a little weak. Um, enjoy this one for about mm, six more hours. Go to sleep and wake up and prepare for a great uh, UTSA team. So um, look, 7-1. But as we look at it every week, it's its own season, 1-0. Find a way and uh, keep pushing forward. Brian, you know, right, I know you don't like to compare seasons, but when, North, uh, when Charlotte scores and you guys have a minute 20 left to, to take the lead, how much of last year against North Texas and those situations prepared this offense for a moment like that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, having veteran players in those situations in those times is, is huge, right? And the reality of it is, I. I I said, okay, hey, this is just another two-minute situation on a Wednesday, right? Minute, I believe it was a minute 22 timeouts, down four. And then, you know, go and we get back. And then it was 40 seconds, one timeout, need a, a touchdown to win. So, guys, this is Wednesday practice. That's all it is. We're just a few hours late, you know. And uh, to see how I got smile, like, oh, hey, the old man's right. That, that, that's good. Um, and because we try to practice those things. You can never practice every situation. You can never – Put yourself in game-like speeds, but we, we do our darndest, and those guys are calm, cool, collective. Obviously, the Seth that uh, the throw that Seth made, obviously to break the record. Uh, I mean, awesome. Can go into you know Rock Taylor, what he's meant to this program as well. So that's the way you want to see guys execute and just find ways to turn it out when it's all said and done. Uh, game-winning drive, and that form of fashion, you know, whether it's years past, practice past, um, it all came to fruition. On that last play, first of all, just wait to see how the pressure catch. And also for Rock to make that play, um, like you just mentioned, what he's mentioned is perfect. And he's the one who makes that play at the end. So, obviously, Rock did some good things in the game. They rolled coverage. I, you know, I know some of you guys are going to ask what's going on. Like, they rolled coverage. They pressed them. They had, you know, playing some two trap over there, doing some different things. Um, and then, you know, Rock knows, like, he had a, he dropped that one ball. Now, it was a contested. And he dropped the one in the far right corner of the end zone. And he was so mad. And I told Rock, and he came off, and I said, we're about to throw you the ball again. You know, you're going to keep getting the ball. And you could just see he cares so much about it. He was just frustrated. He was angry. Um, but I said, keep it focused. we got a lot of football left to play. And sure enough, who would have thought that he would have caught the game-winning catch um, and, and persevered that way. So, it, look, you know, I, I don't think about too many plays in my coaching career. But that was a neat deal. Obviously, the corner out by Rock, the step out in the pocket, put a perfect touch on a great catch. Um, and guess what? I was still, in essence, nervous because got a lot more football to play. Uh, obviously, the, the sack for the safety. And then, but, oh, by the way, they get the onside kick again. I was almost like, do we decline the safety for the first time and make him play it again? And, but near here or there, found a way. And uh, I, that, that last play, uh, tremendous. Tremendous job by 
those two by the office line, by everybody involved in it, and, and credit to the young men that stepped up and made that happen. Terry? Hey, Coach, uh, just by your rationale on not, go, not kick the field goal in game time or certain situation, first half and second half? Yeah, great question. So we've talked about analytics in here before. To an extent, I still use them. Um, our field goal kicking game clearly isn't where we want it to be or need it to be. Um, it's one of those, you know, who's the, who's the better kicker? All those things you got to go kind of with the hot hand. And obviously Tristan made the one last week and then had the early miss. So you got to sit there and say, okay, you also don't want to crush your guy's confidence, right? Like how do you find a way? And, and we're, in general, normally pretty aggressive. Obviously, we got to be sensical in everything we do. Um, and so that was kind of the thought process going in. Like, okay, hey, if we don't get it, the defense playing pretty well, can we get a stop and, and, and play the field position pattern? More so than I ever have playing complimentary football, right? And you'll say, well, why? What does that mean? And no different, like right before or the end of the third quarter, instead of lining up with, I think there's 32 seconds left on the clock and 25, let's just go to the quarter. And you may say, why? Well, if you score, then we're kicking with the wind. And so I'm doing more complimentary football than I ever have. Um, sometimes I just want to, hey, let's go play ball. But that's that's not very smart. And so as a head coach, it's my job to try to put my blinders on even during a game and say, what's best for the entire team? And it's not always being aggressive and going for points. And sometimes it's, say, line up kicking the field goal. Um, but Terry, you know, throughout the game and in past games and in future, I got to – What's going to put us in the best position to have success? Now, it's a lot easier if you're like, hey, every fourth and five, we're just going to kick field goals. Uh, unfortunately, we're not there right now. But hopefully, we're going to continue. i got great faith in our guys um, that they're going to have great weeks of practice and, and next week if it calls for it and we need to kick field goals, we will. Um, but in general terms, I think if you talk to any head coach, right, the analytic books told us to go for on that fourth and three on the ball on the three. I may not be sitting here right now if, if, if we hadn't. And, they didn't get it, so all of a sudden done, found a way, and uh, we'll continue to go with our gut, but also make intellectual decisions on those. Avery, pushing it back, how did those couple of opportunities on fourth down, especially in the red zone, that didn't go your way, how did those affect the momentum of the game in your opinion? Yeah, we always tell our guys that we don't want momentum to have an effect on us, right? Like, play with emotion, but don't let emotions play with you. And, and I think, you know, with 18 to 23-year-olds, how can you keep their focus? It's a gut punch. I mean, there's nothing worse than driving down the field and then not getting it, right? You feel whatever. Maybe it's a, a missed throw. Maybe it's a bad protection. Maybe it's not hitting the hole right, a combination. Maybe it's a bad play call. It's a gut punch. But the reality of it is you go to the bench, clear your mind, because guess what? You're going to have another opportunity. And so how quickly can we get our guys to refocus on the next task at hand? And that's got to be as important as anything. That way you don't go in those walls of having a bunch of not be able to be consistent with it and, the ebbs and flows of a football game, you got to get you guys to, to stay dialed in even after halftime. Um, and so that's all part of it. But, uh, you know, I think it speaks to the maturation of our, our team uh, over the last few years. And certainly uh, this season, the guys, okay, it didn't go our way. Can't hold our head down. Game's not over. We're going to get the ball back and continue to play football. Just right. to follow up, those two big defensive plays there towards the end, the interception that got you the field goal and then the safety by, by Wilco here at the end. Can you just – Tell us what you saw. Yeah, look, first off, the, the interception, when they went to review it, I was like, oh, no, here we go again. Because I think we're 0 for like 30 on reviews. You know, you go back to the Navy game, right? The longer the review, the more likely we're not going to win it. Um, so, but it was a fantastic job. In fact, DJ Bell swiped his arm in there to knock the ball loose, and the receiver was kind of looking for the ball, and then he did a fantastic job boxing him out and kept playing for it. You know, and, and DJ will be the first thing. Like he hadn't, he didn't play his best game. Right, he stepped up um, for an injured player, and, and it was all said and done, made a humongous play when it, was, when it mattered most. And then you know that, that safety at the end, just finding a way. Um, we know how talented that that young quarterback is for Charlotte, and, and the grittiness that they, the entire team played with there. Um, and, but we found a way to get home, and you know, I think a, a handful of guys were able to get in the backfield. I was just sitting there saying, please get home, because if not, we're going to have some man coverages, and that may be answering some different questions. Uh, but Whitlow got home and tremendous play on a safety and a sack. Uh, that's what you want. And, and then to recover the onside kick, those are ever just as important as any other play throughout the game. Right. Right. How big was Potiphar in that drive that Anderson went out and then number two, um, I know Brandon Thomas and Coach Mike Brown and Jeff and Jeff and Jeff and Jeff. Yeah, so – 
first off, Makari, I mentioned on the radio a few minutes ago, like, you always say, hey, do you expect this freshman to play? Going in, coming out of training camp, I, Makari Botterford is, I think, six on the depth chart. I mean, he was down with scout team, uh, not getting a single rep, but a young man that we've, hey, this guy, right, could be a good young running back. I mean, I, I always joked around with him, even in the locker, I said, this 17-year-old who just ran for 77 yards, it's phenomenal. He runs hard. He runs a great power level. He'll be the first to tell you if he picked up his legs, he would have had over a 100-yard game. Um, but that's what you want. You want guys that are believing what we do, right? For the first couple of weeks of, of the season, I mean, he's literally down there giving a scout team look. Right, and then things occurred during the season. So, does that mean he stayed dialed in with what we're doing offensively? Did he continue to learn the playbook? Did he take coaching? And that's what you want for all your guys because it's a long season. And, and so, I'm so proud of a young man like that to stay the course. Hey, oh, your number's called. The shoelace is broken. Let's go get in there. And he he stepped up. Obviously, he, he had to give him a carry last game too. Um, we'll see. And a lot depends on the health of those other guys. Uh, Hopefully, Brandon Thomas can go next week. I don't know that. I don't have that answer uh, today. Uh, I think he tried to go and wasn't capable. And then uh, same with Kobe Mike. So, I'd love to get both of them back. They're both tremendous football players. But if we got to ask one others to step up, I mean, guys, it's a long season. There's going to be somebody else that we're going to be talking about. You're like, who was that guy? You never even talked about him. Uh, because hopefully they had the wherewithal to, to stay locked in and, and make plays when they came. And that, that's what we want our freshmen to do, and that's why we talk about development here at the University of Memphis. John. So, Coach, this one of those games where it was kind of dead in the middle and exciting times. How do you, how do you work with the guys to kind of keep that even keel of never too high, never too low, and just keep fighting? Exciting for who? Uh, <laughs> no, the, it's, uh, yeah. I, I think that's part of it. It kind of goes back to the question of, like, the ebbs and flows of a football game and just staying so focused. Um, you know, clearly, right, first drive, three and out, which is unusual for us. Uh, and then defensively, they they marched it down the field and scored. So, you know, it's easy to sit there and say, man, what's going on? What, did we not wake up for this game? Or what are we doing? Um, and I put that on me, and, and I got to find ways to continue to answer that. We are morning practicing, so no excuses there. But it's throughout the whole deal. Like, at hey, halftime, guys, it's a whole new ballgame, right? And, and we got to go out there and find ways to execute. And I think if you look at our sideline, and that's the one thing I can always hang my hat on is the guys sit there and believe. You know, there's not a whole moping around down the dumps. The guys have big eyes. Uh, they're dialed into what we need to accomplish. And, and to me, that's as important as everything is the guys believe, re regardless of what happened, and, and they're willing to continue to fight. And so, um, again, I think that goes back to the maturity and the guys willing to keep working. Very Coach, uh, I want to take you to the two-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Got it. Um, you guys got a big interception. You know you won the six, but end up being three. Charlotte gets the ball, two plays, touchdown. What's going through your mind, and how are you getting your team ready for this next drive? So I immediately, even before that, right, I told our, our, our coaches, I said, hey, get with the offense guys, be ready for a two-minute situation. I don't know what it's going to look like, but tell them Wednesday practice is coming. And so in our, it kind of puts you the players' mind, okay. And when they scored on that second play, I think I threw up in my mouth. I was pretty disgusted. So let's call it what it is. Uh, quite frustrated. Um, we also had a, a, you know, we had a, a guy get injured. We had somebody go in. But at the end of the day, we didn't do what we needed to. But uh, there's no panic, right? There's no panic. At that point, immediately, we said, okay, offense, here's the situation, okay? A minute, 42 timeouts. Let's go play ball. And they're all sitting there saying, all right, let's go. We're down four, whatever it takes. And to be able to have that mindset and that approach with those guys is great. Um, the guys keep me calm because th there's times where I got steam wanting to come out of my here. I look over the guys, you know, and they're, they're smiling. Like, all right, we got you. We got you, old man. Let's keep playing ball. And, and that's what I love about this group. And offensively, the guys believe. And I even told the defense, said, hey, you may have to go back out there. Even after the, after the safety, I'm sitting there saying, okay, hey, be prepared. They're going to get the onside kick. I didn't say that out loud. They're going to get the onside kick. they got to be ready. they got 80 yards, one timeout, you know, uh, and, uh, 16 seconds left on the clock. So I think that's is about making sure our guys are always prepared and, and putting them in the mind frame or whatever the situation may call when they have to go back out and field. Final question, Joe. Uh, in the second half, you made the quarterback switch for three, obviously. Obviously, they were different. Like, what, what challenges did he kind of present? What did he do? What's the issue for us? Uh, yeah, he is. I, I can talk about opposing players. He's a, he's a stud. 
I mean, he is a dynamic player. Like, I was hoping he wouldn't play because I watched his two previous games where he has lit people up. Uh, he, he's big, smart, he's powerful, he's strong. I mean, and clearly, I mean, everybody sat there and said, well, who is this kid? Um, and certainly very, very dynamic um, and, and made some great throws. And uh, he's a guy, I think, you know, you watch what he did to East Carolina. I mean, he diced them up. Um, and so I, I think they've got a bright future in that quarterback. But we got to be prepared. They, they'd started three different quarterbacks. They played seven different running backs. Um, I think that's a challenge in college football is being ready for as many people as we could. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.